Hi, I'm Dr. Brad Hallam, and I'm the Director of Clinical Training for the Vancouver Coastal Health Psychology Residency Program. If you're watching this video, it's probably because you're interested in applying to our program. There's a lot of great information available in the program brochure, but the purpose of this video is to give you a more personal account of what our program is like. During the video, you'll have the chance to meet some of our supervisors, our current residents, and take a look at some of the facilities. Matching to an internship program is more than just having the highest number of training hours or the highest number of publications. It's really about the goodness of fit between your training goals and the program. So I want to take just a minute to tell you a little bit about our program and what we stand for. Although we have one child rotation and a couple adolescent rotations, the vast majority of our clinical rotations are with adults and older adults. We see medically complex and highly acute patients in outpatient, inpatient, and community settings. These patients are complicated and they allow you the opportunity to refine your case conceptualization, assessment, and intervention skills. We believe in evidence-based practice and we believe that research should inform clinical practice and clinical practice should inform research about what kinds of questions they should be asking. We also have a strong commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion, as well as providing our residents with specific skills in program development and evaluation. If these are the kinds of values that you subscribe to, we would love to have you come to a place that is safe for you to take risks and learn and grow in becoming a professional psychologist. Our training model is such that by the time you're done with our program, that you're ready for registration with the college and independent practice. So I hope you'll consider coming to our program. Thanks for watching our video. So there's lots of great things about the residency program at Vancouver Coastal Health. I think one of the first things that really stood out to me was just how cohesive uh, and tight-knit all the psychologists are throughout all of Vancouver Coastal Health. Um, they take a lot of time getting to know each other both at work and outside of work and it's a really uh, uniquely Think close group of people and at coming in as a resident I instantly felt uh, welcomed as part of that group um, which was a really nice feeling to have I constantly felt like I had a lot of uh, support and mentor mentorship uh, from my supervisors but also from uh, other psychologists who weren't even directly supervising me. So I think that was a really, a really nice aspect. I felt lucky that I had quite a few opportunities arise from completing the residency. One was I had the opportunity to work on a couple different research projects with uh, a few different research groups uh, at Vancouver Coastal Health. Uh, which was really nice. Uh, I've had a couple of uh, first author publications um, that have been submitted as a result of that. Um, I was also fortunate to be able to move directly into a, a position here um, at Vancouver Coastal Health, first at Vancouver General Hospital and, and now I'm in a permanent position at GF Strong Rehab Center. Uh, and that really all came directly from my residency. Uh, First of all, it was fantastic because I felt like when I came into these positions, I was already familiar with them because I had the chance to, to, to work in them uh, as a resident. Uh, and also I just felt like, you know, again, the psychologists uh, here at Vancouver Coastal Health are so supportive and they really helped me get these positions. They advocated for me, they sent me job postings, um, and they, they helped me get, get in quick, move quickly into the early career stages. So that was really fantastic. There were so many great things about the residency program at VCH. I think one of the things that really stood out for me is how the program strikes a really nice balance between um, giving us the support that we need as students in order to facilitate our learning, while also treating us like like employees whose um, opinions are respected as professional psychologists. So what that means is, you know, I always found that I always had um, my supervisors, the DCT, and other psychologists who I was working with to lean on if I needed consultation, if I needed more information or guidance. And yet at the same time, my opinion and my perspectives and what I was doing with patients was being um, being 
being seen as a important part of the, the work that's happening um, at, at the rotation sites and that I always felt that on a multidisciplinary team, my perspective and input was always valued. So I thought that was a really nice balance that the program struck. I feel like a lot of the things that I've been exposed to and that I had a chance to, to learn during the residency um, is beginning to emerge into new directions for my career. I think one of the things that I that the residency really provided for me is that it opened my eyes to the possibilities that are available in in public health, which was something that I've not considered before. But now um, I think I have a lot of um, a lot of interesting opportunities that are emerging that I could pursue in, in the public health field. Um, I also learned a lot about some specific areas of practice which I wasn't familiar with before, such as gaining exposure to, to, e to eating disorders, severe mental illness, as well as perspectives like ACT therapy and, and MI-based approaches to therapy. Uh, and the other thing that really emerged was it allowed me to turn some of the ideas that I've um, been working with in my PhD dissertation work into a more formal program and development and consultation, um, consultation practice, which I am also continuing to, to build on since my experiences in the residency program. So we're really excited to be able to offer a, a rota psychology rotation at the BC Operational Stress Injury Clinic, or the BCOSI Clinic. Um, our clinic is one of the community-based clinics at Vancouver Coastal Health, um, and it's operated in partnership with Veterans Affairs Canada. So it's a, a specialty program where we offer mental health services for um, some fairly unique populations, so veterans and current members of, of the Canadian Armed Forces, and also current and former members of the RCMP. Residents can expect to have training in a number of really important areas. So one is in diagnostic assessment, um, often assessing trauma-related disorders like post-traumatic stress disorder, but also a whole host of related conditions, depression, anxiety, substance use, and so on. Um, the focus of training is on good differential diagnostic questions, um, case formulation when in preparation for treatment planning, uh, report writing, um, and then conveying the results of assessments both to clients but also to, um, to other members of the treating team. Residents also get training in uh, psychotherapy, so in, the, in offering treatment to our clients. Most of that is done on an individual basis, and we offer empirically supported um, and often trauma-focused psychotherapies for, uh, for our clients. And so residents would get training in, in these modalities. Residents also have the opportunity to, to collaborate and to um, consult with other disciplines in our clinic. So we are very much a, a multidisciplinary team. Um, and work together often in, in providing client care. It's a great experience, I think, for residents to be able to collaborate with and interact with, with professionals who also have a lot of experience working with these populations. The OSI clinics are part of a, a national network of clinics offering these fully specialized mental health services across the country. And that can give um, staff and also sometimes residents access to training opportunities or networking opportunities that they might not otherwise have. Uh, I think another really nice feature of the services that we have is that we offer services, um, treatment services, not just to our clients, but also to their family members. So spouses, for example, or their children, um, if they're needing psychoeducation around uh, trauma-related difficulties, for instance. And then I, I think the last one is a really strong emphasis on, on virtual or remote care. So we um, have the capacity to offer treatment services or assessment um, to a wide area because we do telehealth as well as uh, and uh, video-based um, therapy as well as in-person therapy and so that's part of how we can offer services across the province and, and in the Yukon as well. The clinical populations covered here are essentially any referral that might come from neurology or neurosurgery both within the hospital attending physicians and from community and the team is made up of myself and a full-time psychometrist Marcy Simmon. So the focus of this rotation is on assessment only, so there is no intervention. Uh, that's not to say that on this rotation you won't make recommendations about um, people's functioning and uh, ways to compensate for issues that they have, but the primary focus is on providing diagnostic assessments and an opinion back to neurology or neurosurgery about someone's underlying cognitive difficulties. A resident's role on this team is to function essentially as a junior colleague, so uh, the goal is developmental, but through the course of this rotation, the expectation would be that a resident would take on uh, more and more of the clinical responsibility for the entire assessment of a person, from the interview, to testing, to report writing, to provision of feedback to the person and their family. 
and back to uh, the neurological or neurosurgical referral source. So I think this is a fantastic rotation because it is extremely diverse. So uh, we cover essentially anything that you might see in terms of a neurological or neurosurgical presentation, including uh, quite rare conditions that you might only read about in a textbook otherwise, but you probably would have an opportunity to see something relatively rare and unusual here uh, because we're a large medical center uh, and sort of a collection point for some of the more um, obscure or lesser known presentations of difficulties people might have. Thank you for listening and I look forward to meeting you as you come near to the completion of your training program. Uh, we are the only adult surgery program for people with epilepsy and this is the only program in the whole of British Columbia as well as servicing parts of Yukon as well. Um, you're going to be seeing different people with epilepsy due to a variety of etiology including autoimmune and migration disorders, tumors, head injuries and of course MTS. As a neuropsychology resident you will be working in a consultation role with um, a team of four epileptologists, clinical pharmacists, epilepsy nurse, neuroradiology and of course neurosurgeon. Um, the team meets on a weekly basis to discuss our cases and as a neuropsychology resident, you are going to be providing very important contributions to the surgical decision-making process for both our team as well as our patients. Even though pre-surgical neuropsychological assessment takes priority, you're going to be assisting in the differential diagnosis of psychogenic non-epileptic seizures as well as other neurological conditions and provide recommendations for people who have undergone neurosurgery. So occasionally you may also participate in water testing as well as language mapping in awake craniotomy. So if you're interested in honing your skills in neuroanatomy as well as a practice in traditional neuropsychology um, and work with people with very complex neurological conditions and psychosocial background, this is definitely the rotation for you. A residency rotation would be geriatric neuropsychology and it would encompass um, potentially three separate rotations, uh, one at the STAT Center with Dr. Bala, one with myself, uh, Dr. Lamar at uh, in the GRID team, and then one with Dr. Amy Zwicker as part of the geriatric psychiatric outreach team. What we're doing for our geriatric neuropsychology experience is we're combining uh, three separate programs into one geriatric neuro psych rotation and we think that the benefit of that is that the resident will get a full uh, complement of what geriatric neuropsychology looks like in an academic medical center and community. So the residents will be able to work in an inpatient setting, uh, in a medical day program, uh, as well as out in community. The resident will get to deal with a lot of uh, very interesting and complex questions surrounding uh, you know, issues like capacity, driving, um, how, how neurological and mental health disorders in midlife uh, look uh, for folks later in life. This will all occur as part of a multidisciplinary team. Some of these clients actually are seen in many different programs uh, and so sometimes there's the opportunity to actually follow the patient um, across their trajectory uh, within our programs, which is really quite an interesting thing to see, especially when someone starts out quite unwell and you're able to kind of see the evolution of their improvement and um, getting back to a regular way of life for them. The rotation is primary, primarily a neuropsychology rotation, so assessment will be the primary responsibility. Uh, that being said, the resident will be functioning as a member of the multidisciplinary team, so they'll be responsible for communicating, you know, issues such as diagnoses, treatment recommendations, community supports, uh, both to uh, other members of the multidisciplinary team, but also to family members of the patients themselves. 
the resident would be a primary member of our team on the grid team, um, and in these uh, in in this situation, it's a very small team, so uh, we are able to very intensively discuss and triage uh, the treatment for our patients, and it's actually a really wonderful uh, team to be working on because um, we're, we are close. Um, we all very respectfully. Uh, listen and, and share our, our information with each other regarding the clients and um, in my experience it, what what makes us unique is it really means that we are providing the absolute best in patient care because um, we are all able to work together to figure out what is the best thing for this client at this time. There's often a lot of ethical uh, issues that come up in mm -hmm. in the folks that we see so again I've mentioned a couple of those like uh, capacity whether people have capacity to make decisions uh, whether they have the capacity to manage their finances, um, whether they have the capacity to drive. And uh, it's not only the assessment of those areas, but uh, learning about how to communicate that with individuals and their family members and offer them alternatives in the cases where they can, can no longer uh, participate in some of the activities that they were previously participating in. I just want to say that um, the collegiality that we have uh, within Vancouver Coastal Health in terms of the psychologists is outstanding. I've worked in a number of different settings and I have to say these are some of the most supportive, friendly, open um, people I've ever worked with. That piece is really important because um, we have strong professional relationships, we have strong friendships, and um, it's, it's a really nice reciprocal kind of Kind of situation. You know, the other thing to mention is that we have a number of prior residents who are now on uh, staff and faculty here at, um, at VGHN at UBC, and it's so fantastic to get to work with people over the years and uh, move on from relationships that were uh, initially training relationships into professional relationships. And yeah, it's such a collegial group, and uh, you can't go wrong uh, here. This is the Heart Center rotation. Um, it's at St. Paul's Hospital um, and I am the uh, primary supervisor for it. I'm Dr. Quincy Young. Um, the team is a multidisciplinary team um, and it's this is an acute medical setting so you get to work with a full range of uh, medical providers and we all work together closely to try to optimize outcomes for our patients. The primary program that we work in is a heart transplant program, so we see people pre and post, um, but the, we also have the opportunity to see patients across the heart center, so this could be anything from inherited arrhythmia, which have quite young patients, to um, our transplant patients, which are more often in the middle of their years. Within the heart transplant program, one of the unique things that we do is um, a psychosocial assessment for the patient's candidacy for transplant. Unfortunately, there are not enough hearts for everybody, um, so not everybody who wants one or needs one gets one. Um, and the psychosocial, the behavioral um, aspect is an important piece to look at. So this can be some pretty interesting work, raise a lot of ethical dilemmas, and also gives you the opportunity to work um, with these uh, medical providers to make those sorts of decisions. In addition to the transplant assessment piece, we offer f treatment for psych any psychological conditions that are found to exist. Um, depression and uh, anxiety are very common in this patient population. As a resident, you will have the opportunity to see that treatment from start to finish. So um, doing that intake assessment, um, figuring out diagnosis, make a conceptualization of what's going on, make that treatment plan, see it through from start to finish. We tend to think of cardiac disease as being a middle-aged white man problem. Um, it hits all the ages. So um, our, our congenital heart program, for example, have a lot of youth in it. Um, the inherited arrhythmia clinic um, also have people who turn out to have a genetic variant for some kind of arrhythmia, um, and they're often quite young. So you do get a nice variety of um, experiences when you're working here. So the program is called Provincial Adult Specialized Eating Disorders Program, and it's basically for 
adults and 19 and up uh, who have very chronic uh, eating disorders and a lot of comorbid conditions and so they have been seen either by in primary care or in secondary care and were deemed appropriate for uh, more specialized services. And the resident will be mainly involved in that outpatient day hospital program that basically includes a lot of group programming and a lot of individual meetings as well. The resident's um, skill sets that he or she would learn is that they can become more comfortable in different uh, group formats, including more process-oriented groups. They will also carry a, a caseload of an individual patient that will be assigned to them, and they will receive one-to-one um, um, -one supervision on that as well. And so they can expect by the end of the residency training that they have a very firm grasp of what uh, eating disorders representation is like, especially when there's a chronic course, and also learn about the different stages of readiness in eating disorders treatment and learn to meet people at their different stages of readiness and how to adjust the treatment that they deliver. I think it's a really great opportunity for a resident to uh, get experiences with different team members. It's also a really good experience for learning how to um, practice with patients that are quite uh, have high comorbidity and so how to prioritize which symptoms you're gonna treat uh, at what point how you're going to focus your treatment, how do you adjust it to the different um, crises that the patient presents with. You're actually being really guided as to how to deliver group uh, treatment well and uh, adjust it to this particular patient population. We are a consultation service serving multiple areas in the hospital, including several inpatient and outpatient clinics. Our primary referral sources come from the HIV clinic, the geriatric outpatient clinic, um, as well as the inpatient psychiatry units. Um, we also serve a Foundry, which is a program for youth that are homeless or at risk of homelessness. So on this rotation, you will learn about doing neuropsychological assessment with patients with complex medical and or psychiatric histories using a flexible battery approach. You will also have the opportunity to provide feedback to patients about the results and recommendations of your neuropsychological assessments. The rotation does not provide much in the way of intervention aside from feedback sessions. Um, you, some people have been able to do inpatient uh, psychiatric groups, especially those with limited experience with psychiatric inpatients, um, but those are more just to give you another interaction, an, another type of interaction with those, uh, with that patient group. Part of this rotation is that we will, will be reviewing neuroimaging of your patients throughout your rotation and at the end you may have the opportunity to sit in with a neuroradiologist who's doing neuroradiology readings. This again is not a guaranteed opportunity, but the majority of uh, residents I've had in the past have been able to do this. Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer McDonald. And I'm Dr. Trina Blake. We're two of the supervisors at GF Strong Rehab Center, and uh, we have a couple of different rotations here that residents can be part of. One of those rotations is a health psychology rotation, and the other is our neuropsychology rotation. So residents can actually be part of different programs. We have an acquired brain injury program, spinal cord injury, neuromuscular disorders, and an adolescents and young adults program. And the psychologists here really are embedded in interdisciplinary practice. On the teams, we have physicians, psychologists, speech language pathologists, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, rec therapists, and we can consult to a sexual health team as well as vocational counseling, so it really is truly a broad spectrum. So I think at GF Strong, you're exposed to such a broad range of pop patient populations. On the Acquired Brain Injury Program, you'll work with clients that have acquired brain injuries, strokes, brain tumors, infections, and other rare acquired neurological disorders. On the neuromuscular service, you get to really truly work with something new almost every day. We see people with severe total body surface burns, um, amputations, muscular dystrophy, MS, um, and transplants as well. So it's quite an interesting place to work because you're learning something new every day. And we see both inpatients and outpatients, and unlike other sites, we're spending a lot of time in consultation with multidisciplinary teams and working really closely with those other healthcare professionals. It's really a fantastic climate to work in and we hope that you come to our program.
The rotation is based at the BC Psychosis Program, which is uh, what's called a tertiary mental health program for people with schizophrenia spectrum disorders. So that means that they are uh, folks who've had a poor response to treatment in their home communities, and so they're from all across BC, and they get sent to us um, for assessment, treatment optimization, and lots of times for um, some of the, the pieces like neuropsych assessment or uh, psychotherapy. Well. Mahesh and I have set things up where we offer a wide range of psychological services um, and in terms of the division of labor I do more of the neuropsychological assessment and Mahesh is involved more in the treatment aspect. One of the advantages of the program is that it allows for a certain flexibility so someone from the adult mental health track would do um, more individual therapy as well as group therapy so we have folks who have schizophrenia spectrum disorders and a lot of other comorbidities so there's going to be essentially complex formulation and um, putting together a treatment plan and working with them. Our patients tend to stay with us for about uh, the median length of stay is six months so you get a lot of time to work with someone. The residents in the adult mental health track would do have a caseload of individual therapy clients so typically between four and six cases as well as start to uh, work on uh, some of the groups that we do. So for residents who are concentrating on more on the neuropsychological assessment track, a typical day for them would be to do, uh, you know, to begin with, to do extensive chart review to see if there's been prior assessments, uh, to learn about individuals' histories as it's charted in, in medical records and so on. And that provides a good sort of background to eventually meet with clients to do uh, clinical interviews, to do um, you know testing using various neuropsychological instruments, and then other important components of the student's experience are doing sessions with clients to discuss uh, results from the evaluation, and sometimes some patients can even be recommended to participate in, in the cognitive remediation uh, program, which we also have on the unit. If there are residents who have prior experience in therapy, given that Ivan and I are both on the unit and the psychology team is very much embedded in the unit, there is a little bit of flexibility. So sometimes we've had residents who've been able to take on one therapy case or to help out with the CRT group as well. So there's a little bit of, um, you know, a range of different options even for the neuropsych resident. For the AMH track, the typical resident roles are, I mentioned would be doing the individual therapy and then helping out with the groups. There's this really uh, multidisciplinary approach towards um, care that happens and one of the nice things that the residents do is because they're doing some of the individual therapy with the clients, they would get to know them very well and we're really working on integrating their functional goals and recognizing what are the limitations in um, their ability to do their those goals with the cognitive challenges that we're seeing and working both on improving basic cognition as well as strategy utilization and development and really generalizing those strategies to use in their day-to-day -day lives itself. So, so it's really integrated across those different disciplines. We recognize that most residents who come in may not have had a lot of exposure to working with folks with psychosis um, and severe mental illness, but uh, I think that it's a really good opportunity to work on essentially the formulation-driven therapy and working with people who might have multiple challenges and multiple comorbidities and really honing and finessing some of those uh, therapy skills. You know, if you're interested in, in the assessment piece or in the intervention piece or um, engaging in some of the academic and research activities, we certainly look forward to working with you. I think also Vancouver is gorgeous. The campus is actually just utterly beautiful. Um, we're in the middle of um, forest trails and uh, it's a great place to be, it's a great place to live. We'd love to see you here.